Hey, welcome to part one of my Ableton Basics series where I show you how to create a click track using Ableton Live. Let's go. Welcome everybody. As I said today, we're gonna learn how to build a click track in Ableton Live. If this kind of thing interests you, please feel free to hit subscribe and hit the like button. Make sure to stick around to the very end of the video because I'm gonna show you a secret trick on how to automate Ableton's click to turn on and off automatically for you. Uh, we'll be doing this in session view. I do think that's the easiest view if you're just looking to build a click. I'm gonna fly through this so you can get the info you need it quickly. On the right hand side, we have scenes right here. And first thing we need to do is name our scene. So I hit Command R or you can double click and hit rename and you will name it song one or whatever the name of your song is. Right here, you'll put the BPM, the tempo of the song. Let's put 80 for this. And then right here, put the time signature of the song. So we'll do four, four. And then when I hit play, uh, you'll see it changes to 80 BPM. We gotta do a few more things. So Ableton will not actually play this scene because there's nothing to play. There's no content in it. So if you literally just want to click, you have to create a dummy MIDI clip. And that's really simple to do. You'll go to create, insert MIDI track. I'm going to delete this other one. You can name it dummy. And then you'll write or double click, right click, excuse me. Uh, and then insert MIDI clip. There needs to be nothing in it. There doesn't need to be anything in it. And now you'll see the transport is playing. So it's actually running the clip. The final thing we need to do is simple. We gotta turn on Ableton Live's metronome. Turn it on here. You should hear it click. It's clicking for us. There we go. You use a cue out right here to change the output of that click, depending on if you're using a headphone jack or an audio interface or something like that. And then you can continue this process. So I could right click, hit insert scene, make it song two, make this 75 BPM or whatever I wanted and whatever time signature. Um, and just remember, if I make another scene, I do need to option drag this MIDI clip down because you'll need a dummy clip on every song. Again, if you just want to click, you do need a dummy MIDI clip for that. A, a couple other small things, like if you want this click doubled, like for song one right here, you could do 8-8 eight, eight, and you'll get an eighth note. Oh, didn't listen to me. There it goes. Um, if you didn't want to accent, you could do one four. Now there's no accent. Um, so yeah, you could do things like that. You could double the BPM if you wanted. I, I don't love that option. It's because if you do start pulling tracks in, it's good to have the right BPM. Another thing to be uh, just aware of is uh, what Ableton calls this global quantization. Quantization. So basically right here, this tells Ableton, when you play the next song, do you want it to play right when you hit the play button or do you want us to wait till beat one? So right now it's on one bar, which means if I hit this song and I hit play on the next song on beat three, Watch it. It's not gonna fire until beat one of the next measure, which is pretty cool. But another setting you might like is none, which just means as soon as I hit it, it auto fires to the next one. So whichever one you wanna do, that's up to you. So here's the bonus part. Let me show you how you can automatically turn this metronome on and off, because for whatever reason, when you open Ableton, the, um, the metronome is automatically off. Nothing you can do about it, and I can't tell you how many gigs I've started to run an Ableton session where the click's off. And then there's also been times in a worship environment or something where I want the click to turn off, but I want to keep um, Ableton's transport running because I'm running a pad or something like that. So let me show you this real quick. So you will go to insert MIDI track. We'll name it click. Here's what's important. You need to run the MIDI to, so the MIDI output to your IAC driver. If you do not know how to set up your IAC driver to do that, I will link a video below that will show you how to do that. We're gonna make an empty MIDI clip. And then I'm gonna go right here to this transport control that gives us our envelopes. I'm gonna to go to MIDI control and I'm gonna scroll all the way down to 119. It doesn't have to be that one, it's just the one that I like to do. I'm gonna take envelope, pull it all the way to the top, make me another little dot, take it all the way whoop, to the bottom. Right there, so that one's a zero, the bottom's a zero, and then it goes to 127 at the top, and I'm just gonna pull this as close as I can. If I take this away, um, if I take the fixed grid off, it'll let me get even closer here. That's what I'm looking for. All right, and then I do not, well, I'm gonna keep it on loop for now. I'm gonna turn it off loop in a minute. All right, and then I'm gonna turn this off. Um, I'm going to let this run, so it's looping right now. I'm gonna hit, go to my MIDI um, up here where I can program MIDI stuff. I'm gonna hit the click. 
And there we go. Now it's programmed to that, and I think I got something in there I did not want. Yes, um, CC119 went to this, this slot. I don't want that. I'm going to delete that. So now I want this to un... I'm going to go to this clip. I'm going to unloop it. I'm going to say click on. I'm going to rename it to go click on. And now when I hit it, it should... Yep, now it clicks on. That's pretty cool. And then you can just option drag that down on every song you want to click. And it'll always leave a click on for you. So here's the cool part about this. I can make a new scene. I can drag this down. Double click it. And I can just invert this filter. Which simply means I will take... Uh, i got to zoom way in here. Take this part to zero. I'm going to take it up to 127. And take the part that was 127. Oops. Oh, it's going crazy on me over here. Take this that was at 127. Take it down. All right, we're going to delete that and try again because I have no idea what just happened. Option drag. Double click. Zoom in. All right, I'm going to take 127 down to zero. Take zero up to 127. So basically 127 tells it to turn the metronome off and zero turns it tells it to turn it on. Rename this click off. Now if we have the click running on song two, when I get to this one, metronome should turn off. But the transport's still running. So if you're running like a clip, uh, pad or keys patches or something like that, um, it'll keep running. So I hope that was super helpful. Stick around for part two where I will show you how to add guide cues, uh, intro cues to this type of a session.